Hey, yo, what up, y'all? Terry Warfield. Hey, I hope you're having a good day so far. If this is your first time here, a big, fat welcome to you. And if you're part of the fam, you're part of the squad, and you came back, welcome back. Real quick, before we move forward, we should be at 14K by now, by the time you're watching this video. If not, we are that freaking close. So I wanted to say thank y'all for all y'all's support. Let's keep this going. So right now, I am out in the middle of seemingly nowhere. I'm not going to tell you where I'm at, because some of y'all or creeps, but it is cold outside. The show got to go on. Look, daddy got a new truck. Look, look. See that? That's my new Grand Cherokee. That replaced the old one. This is my third Grand Cherokee. I really love these things, and I really love the white on black look. I think that looks sick and clean. I just picked it up literally yesterday. But anyways, back to the subject of the video, right? I got to talk to you about why I don't necessarily think the iPhone 12 Pro, even though I love it, is really a pro device. And I got five reasons why. The iPhone 12 Pro, it is marketed as a pro level device for creators. And listen, let me just say this. I think the iPhone 12 Pro is amazing. I am really tired of people comparing it to a mirrorless camera or cinema camera because it's freaking not. However, it is amazing that we have this level of technology in our pockets, in a phone that we already have with us, and we can pull it out and still get dope footage without needing to necessarily carry around like a Sony a7S III that I'm filming on right now, which I love, or any other camera for that matter. So for what it is, it's freaking amazing. However, I don't like how Apple markets this as a pro device when us pros, when it comes to video creation, I think most of us need a little bit more than the average consumer, which is what Apple really goes after is that average consumer. We just wanted to work market. So let me just get into the meat and potatoes on why I think the iPhone 12 Pro is not necessarily a pro device for pro creators. Let's get it. All right, y'all. So I got my iPhone 12 Pro right here and i got the gold edition i've made a few videos on this phone already matter of fact here's a whole playlist right up there if you're interested is that a plane that's a plane taking off but i think it's amazing what we could do from our pockets when it comes to video and photography so don't get that twisted my issue with the iphone 12 as a pro creator and i'm gonna use the term pro loosely right because i'm not trying to make it seem like i'm some like professional cinematographer or movie sets or nothing like that no i'm a freelance filmmaker i do youtube videos and i do stuff on the side with video and photography now i know with the iphone 12 and any other iphone for that matter i can download an app like filmic pro to unlock all of these great capabilities and in my opinion this freaking one thousand dollar phone if you got the iphone 12 pro or the 12 pro max which is even more expensive should have out of the box without me having to spend additional money on apps. And I get with cameras, a lot of times you gotta buy additional accessories, but I'm buying this phone as a one trick pony. I don't wanna have to spend money on apps to do what I feel like the camera should do in the first place. So anyways, number one is the lack of available frame rate. So for example, not everybody uses 4K. A lot of people still use 1080p because it's smaller file sizes and most people consume content at what? Like 480, a 720? So the fact that the iPhone iPhone 12 default only has 1080p 30 and 1080p 60. What about the people that want to film native 1080p 24 frames a second? Why is that not in this phone? And also, why don't we have intermediate options? Okay, we got 4K, we got 1080. Where is 2.7K? Why can't we do 2.7K and 24, or 30, or 60, or whatever the frame rate options are? I should be able to use all of those available frame rates in the phone because it's not like it can't do it because if you use an app like Filmic Pro, you can get access to all of those frame rates. So that's my number one thing is just the lack of available frame rates to go across the board for all creators. Let's go. All right, so number two, I kind of talked about this earlier in the video, but it's just a lack of promo. Why do I not have promo? Well, I guess I should define what is promo, right? Promo would be like your access to just your shutter speed or your ISO, your aperture, your white balance, all of that crap. Why do I not have access to do that on my iPhone 12 Pro without buying additional apps? Now don't get me wrong, the iPhone does come with some options to control exposure, etc., and lock exposure right out of the box, but I can't fine tune anything I want to do in video mode because it doesn't have freaking pro mode right out of the box. Why does the iPhone 12 Pro not give me control over the pro things I need to do when it comes to my videos? Apple really needs to change this. All right, so the third reason I don't think the Apple iPhone 12 Pro is a pro device is because the inability to control bit rates and bit depth. And again, 
I know you can download an app like Filmic Pro to take more control, but why should I have to do that? So one thing I talked about in the earlier video was why the heck do I have to pick HDR to get access to 10-bit? What if I just wanna shoot standard definition in 10-bit? Why do I need to pick HDR? The reality is, Apple just doesn't want to do it. And I get it, they want the experience to be clean, seamless, and all of that stuff. But you mean to tell me the same company that can manufacture the fastest silicone that we have access to can't find a way to implement this stuff into a clean interface like they do everything else. I don't freaking buy it. I should be able to adjust my bit rate how I want to, adjust my bit depth, whether I want to do 8-bit or 10-bit and not be confined to only being able to shoot 10-bit in HDR. That's crap, yo, that's crap. Let's move on to the fourth thing. All right, so my fourth thing is not a huge problem, but I still think that they need to fix it. And that's the fact that I can't shoot like a log profile or flat or neutral profile from the default camera app. Again, I'm gonna keep stressing this. I know there are apps to do this, but this is a pro device. This should come out of the box, a log mode or some type of neutral profile that I can shoot in to be able to push and pull the colors around a little bit more. Now to the iPhone 12 Pro's benefit is 10-bit color. So even though it doesn't have like a flat log profile or something like that, we still get 10-bit color, which is way more flexible than 8-bit. Also to the iPhone's benefit, I like how the video out of the iPhone is not super duper contrasty like some other phones. So we get points for that too. But again, we should have some type of control over saturation or some type of log mode or neutral profile mode that we can use on the iPhone 12 to get that color gray the way we freaking want it. Let's move on to the last thing. Number five, let's go. All right, the last thing that I think is really a big fail on the iPhone 12 Pro is the fact that it uses lightning. I know that Apple has this plot to probably move to wireless charging everything with MagSafe, but guess what? I don't give a what? about that. Why am I using a lightning connector in the year 2020 when USB-C is available? All of Apple's other pro products have USB-C. Why am I still using lightning? You probably say that, Terry, this isn't a big deal, right? Just airdrop it. Well, what if I don't freaking use Mac? What if I use an iPhone, but I use Windows? Then how am I supposed to get my files off? Oh, I have to connect them to the computer and transfer over lightning, which compared to USB-C, the speeds are freaking terrible. So Apple, I don't understand why you couldn't have just put USB-C. Oh, I mean, I know why, because you know, you wanna use the same stuff you already have to save money, and you wanna pigeonhole people into using MagSafe. I get it, but from my perspective, I would much rather have access to freaking USB-C and my iPhone 12 Pro. Now again, I don't wanna say that I don't love the iPhone 12 Pro, because I do. I think it's fantastic. I think it's amazing the type of quality we can get out of it. However, those five things I really feel like would take my user experience to a pro level versus the stock video and photos app. So anyways, I hope that y'all enjoyed this freaking rant. Let me know if you agree or disagree with what I said. Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna be down there kicking it with y'all. So hey, go crazy. I don't even care, man. Thank you so much if you stayed to the end and you watched up to this point. Till next time, I appreciate y'all and I'm out. Peace of chicken grease, Terry Warfield. Peace.